Hello everyone, this is LockOS, and welcome to DCS World for the Mission Editor. And in this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and look at setting up JTACs, as well as their airborne uh, config, uh, counterpart, uh, AFAX. Now, something to note is that this is going to be the quote-unquote simple method. There's a much more complicated method that gives you a bit more finer control over the laser designation point, but that uh, uses scripting. And I will actually set that up uh, in a separate video just because it's a it's a completely different method, requires a bit more uh, work and a bit more it's a bit more complicated. This is the much more simpler method, quote unquote. And this method will allow your players uh, to communicate with the JTAC through the radio menu. Whereas the other the other variant is a scripting variant, which is gives it's a bit more powerful, but you're gonna have to use triggers in order to set things up and run things the way uh, to get them to work a certain way. But that, again, there's a bit more flexibility in that. You can literally have a laser from the start. With the uh, scripting method, you can literally just have a laser at the beginning of the mission and just run it through the entire time. With this method, the quote unquote easy quick method, uh, you will have to, the player will have to go through the JTAC uh, menu and um, flow where they're gonna have to get the nine line, report a whole bunch of stuff. So it's gonna be a very long drawn out process. So do keep in mind that this is a bit clunky on the user's end uh, for a certain um, uh, methodologies and like there are certain like strike. If you're doing like a one pass, like quick strike, this isn't really a good method for that, particularly because as you will see, when we go into this ground menu here and go into our uh, FAC uh, engaged group tasking, which will set up the JTAC, uh, you, you can only engage ground uh, target groups. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So in order to actually even get uh, the ability to even uh, use FAC, uh, to use the FAC group, uh, you definitely, you can only use those on ground disk units. So you're not gonna be able to have like a ship um, on shore designating targets through this method. Uh, you're definitely gonna be having a ground unit for um, a JTAC or a, uh, a airborne unit that has a targeting pod. Uh, more often than not, there's really the uh, the only three units that really seem to reliably be able to do this are the Humvee Jeep, uh, the Humvee Jeep with the 50 cal. Let's see here, Scout and Recon. Yeah, there's the Scout uh, Humvee at the 50 cal. So in fact, let's go showcase this in the mission editor so you see what I'm talking about. So unarmored Humvee. Humvee with the 50 cal. And where's my striker with the uh, the striker APC variant with the um, 50 cal. Of these three, I know for certain that the, uh, for absolute certain that the striker can use all designation methods. And I'm very, I'm very certain that the other two Humvees can use also all three um, designation methods. Other units, however, uh, might not be able to use all the designation methods listed in the FAC group for your en route task. So do keep in mind that if you're specifically using JTAC for like a F5E Tiger II or a Mirage 2000C or even a Mirage F1 or any other aircraft in the future that can carry laser guided bombs, but does not have a targeting pod equipped or is able to equip a targeting pod to begin with, uh, you're definitely going to keep in mind that you want to stick to the striker ICV just for the uh, the sake of sanity um, and that you'll be able to get a de laser designation from this unit, at least using this method. Stripping method, like I mentioned before, a bit more flexible on that. But let's go ahead and set up our striker ICV. So we set up the striker ICV as a group. There is, uh, you want to use start on route task uh, just to keep things simple. That way, um, when it gets the, so either if you're doing it, so if you're expecting the group to travel, as soon as it reaches the waypoint where they're supposed to start uh, designating, they can do that. Or at the or ideally, really, what these what these JTACs, you want to set them up in their uh, in the position they're going to be lazing from at the start of the mission, ideally. So we have our JTAC here. 
uh, who's going to be uh, camping out here for the entire mission, uh, just designating from the spot. Uh, that way there's no uh, goofiness with... That way there's no goofiness with uh, setting things up or like, oh no, the, uh, you didn't set the timing up right or the JTAC got stuck on some rock in the middle of nowhere. It's there, ready to designate. So there is FAC and there is FAC Engaged Group. Uh, FAC is a more generic uh, JTAC role for the unit where it's just going to go ahead and whatever it sees out here or wherever it sees in its field of vision, it's going to start uh, calling on... Um, it's going to start providing uh, targeting information for your aircraft. So you're not going to, with the FAC uh, tasking, you don't have any control over what the JTAC will assign to your uh, players. It's a, it's just, it will just, whatever it sees, it'll start assigning. With that being said, there uh, your FAC can have a call sign, and there's quite a number to choose from. So go ahead, pick something unique and memorable, because everyone usually picks Axeman or Anvil, Usually Axman is usually what I hear a lot on because it's the def default. But we're going to go ahead and pick Moonbeam. And then you can have Moonbeam 1. And then if you have different uh, JTACs, you can even have like Moonbeam 1 down here. But then Moonbeam 2 could be up here designating targets that are up in this world, section of the world. Each JTAC uh, will also need a frequency and a modulation, so AM or FM. I would mostly stick to the AM band because that's where most of your military radios are going to be on. So, 133 AM. However, we know the aircraft, we're going to go to 155 for our frequency, so that way it's a bit more, more memorable, at least to me. And we're going to go ahead also and showcase uh, FAC Engage Group. So that did reset all their settings, which is fine. So FAC Engage Group is going to have a bit more control over what the JTAC is going to target. So if you want a JTAC group to give priority to a very specific target, you want to use FAC Engage Group. So in particular, if there's a whole bunch of units and there's a SAM site, and you want the, J, uh, the uh, JTAC to laze the SAM site first, you would want to go ahead and use FAC A Engage Group in order to do that. So we have group, and we only have one ground unit for target, so we're going to go to uh, ground one. So it's going to target ground one. Visible, if you uh, select this, the group will always be visible to the JTAC. So the JTAC doesn't have to uh, try to search and find the unit. It, the JTAC will just automatically know that the unit is there. And for the sake of simplicity, I highly recommend selecting that. So that way, you're not reliant on the JTAC finding the group uh, it's just the JTAC will always find the group. So that way that eliminates some of the hit or miss functionality sometimes with DCS. Uh, that just, leaves, that just uh, eliminates another point of failure for your mission, especially if you are reliant on this JTAC in order for your aircraft to get bombs on target. Weapon, I would leave it on auto. You, you could tell the JTAC to request a certain weapon type, but go ahead and just leave it on auto. Priority, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and whatnot is setting the priority of the target. It goes from lowest to highest. So priority zero is the highest priority. And then priority one is the next one down. Priority two is the next one further down from that. So it doesn't really matter because there's only one ground unit here, but the last priority, uh, if, there, yeah, if you had a whole bunch of more ground units, uh, make sure to set every, and for the FACA group, and sorry, for FACA engage group, if I were to clone this and there was a different group, I would set this priority to want, uh, to a different value, so that way you're not. That way your uh, your your, uh, your uh, JTAC is firing on one group at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and just delete that. There we go. And then designation type. This is very important. You can have uh, no designation and just basically the JTAC is gonna call out the target. Uh, you can have auto, which lets the JTAC decide, which you want a bit more control over the JTAC. Uh, WP, or white phosphorus, or Willie Pete, that basically throws out a smoke grenade to designate where the target is. And then usually what they'll do is the JTAC will say, they'll fire the, they'll shoot up the smoke grenade, it'll plop down somewhere, 
and then they'll say, hey, the target is X many feet this distance away from the smoke uh, unit. So that way you can have a smoke marker for your unit to walk on, uh, to be able to hopefully ID the target a little bit easier. IR pointer is useful for night ops. And that is particularly because if you have, if your pilot has NVGs and they use IR pointer designation, the a IR beam of energy will pop out from the unit that is, J, uh, that is acting as a JTAC towards the uh, target. And then that way, if you know where your friendly unit is, uh, you'll be able to see at night where your where the enemy unit is through your NVGs. However, if your aircraft, if your air crew forgot to equip NVGs or you didn't have them on as default for an air start or anything like that, or even if the aircraft doesn't have access to NVGs, this is kind of pointless. Also, it's really only useful um, to, for night ops, so just keep in mind that it is a thing, but it's not super useful. Now, the two really useful options for your JTAC, again, especially if you're relying on the JTAC to drop the laser guided bomb, is laser and white phosphorus laser. So, with, uh, so laser is going to fire a laser from, there we go. So you have to also, sometimes if you play around with this too much, it'll, you have to exit out and, and enter back in in order to get the laser code to appear. But if you do get the designation for laser, you definitely want the laser code to appear because this is how you are going to actually designate the target. So laser will guide laser guided bombs onto target. The laser code is the code that the bomb or the weapon will look for when guiding onto that target. It is very important that this laser code down here matches up with whatever air what, what with whatever code that you have equipped for the aircraft. So we're going to go ahead and for instance go down here to the Tomcat and we're going to go into the additional properties. So whatever aircraft that you want to uh, you are trying to create the mission for you want to make sure that this laser code in usually found in additional properties, so 1688 in this case, matches up with whatever this laser code is here. That is because for a for pretty much almost every aircraft in DCS, the laser code is set on the ground by the uh, ground crew. And once you get airborne, and really for a lot of aircraft, once you start the engines up, and you start moving, even if you're on the ground taxiing around, you cannot set the laser code. As, as is very much, you have to have the aircraft shut down and uh, waiting for startup in order to actually change the laser code. So do make sure that laser code here matches up with whatever your uh, player aircraft are in game so that your, uh, player air, your players are able to actually use the, the JTAC to actually drop the bombs on the laser code. Data link. Is going is uh, useful for I believe mainly right at this moment the A10C because it'll because uh, JTAX will be able to send data through the uh, network so it uh, to feed more information into the A10C uh, data link so do keep in mind that that is a feature mostly made for um, A10C pilots but use but selecting it will allow them to send data through to the AT A10C pilots um, so that way they have a bit more information to perform their attack run. And then again, call signs can be selected, number, frequency, and modulation. So that is all that's there for uh, your AFAC group down there, for your JTAC group down there. AFAC uh, effectively is an airborne version of it, and pretty much all the same rules apply. Uh, you can do AFAC assigned group, you can just do Again, I would normally do this as part of a start routine, uh, start and en route task. And there you go. Attack uh, group, not attack group, it's FACA assigned group. And then you can go ahead and do everything like before. And I forgot to mention, uh, white phosphorus laser shoots off a white phosphorus round, and then from that, they're then going to fire a laser and also walk you on the target like that. 
Now, I do believe for airborne units, if you were to do uh, white, uh, white phosphorus and then laser, you would need to equip smoke rockets on the actual unit, because otherwise the unit would have no smoke to fire. Ground units are just expected to have smoke, so there's that. So we're just going to get rid of this uh, AFAC up there. We're going to go down here, double check our FAC A engaged group, 155, Moonbeam, 115. Get rid of the Tomcat, for, that was just there for demonstration purposes. We have our Hornet here with Laser Guide and Mavericks. And then 115 for our radio, and then we're just gonna hop in real quick because it should be a relatively simple mission. And I just wanna showcase just a quick brief what the what your players are gonna see whenever, they, whenever you create a JTAC in mission. All right, thankfully that was relatively quick. So we're gonna go ahead and hit fly. All right, we're gonna get autopilot, barometric altitude, hold on. Put up the throttles a bit so we don't follow the sky, and then we're gonna go ahead and go to the um, comm menu here. And then you see over here on F4, we have JTAC Moonbeam. And then you have to go through a whole setup of communicating with the JTAG um, and getting it to work, uh, communicating with the JTAG, calling in your uh, information status. Whole bunch, it's a, it's a whole uh, process to actually use the JTAG in game. Uh, we're not going to go over that, but I just want to showcase that that's what uh, menu will appear and that's what you have to work with. Also, keep in mind that with your JTAG, uh, especially once you're in mission, you might have to play around with this a bit more depending on the mission. Gonna let our aircraft fly into the wilderness. Your JTAC should be positioned in the uh, in a relatively high up spot like this, overlooking the target area. Uh, if you place the JTAC too low, or if you don't place it high enough, there is a very distinct possibility that the JTAC won't be able to spot the target or get a clear line of sight onto the target for designation. So your laser designations will fail because there's literally a mountain or especially in a more urban or forested area uh your elevation above your ground elevation might be high enough but then there might be a tree blocking the way there might be a building blocking the way so you definitely want to set your jtacs up on hills or ideally even mountain near mountain peaks overlooking the target area and while it may look silly to have a, a striker like literally clinging onto the side of a mountain uh it does work if you if you're having a hard time getting the uh, laser designation to prop on a target because it's uh, down in the weeds, so to speak. And other than that, I should mention before we call this video a uh, wrap, JTAX, like set up through this, cannot target fixed points on the ground nor static structures. That's going to be covered in the next tutorial where we will go over setting up laser designations through scripting and i will see you all in that video coming right up have fun building missions in the mission editor